I was beating the shit out of myself. Yeah. Metaphorically and physically, just beating the shit out of myself. Um, not sleeping, all the negative toxic things I was doing to it. Yeah. I mean, you Talk can see it. I mean, when I look back at my old pictures too, oh, like, oh God, that girl, that poor yes. girl just doesn't even, she's so clueless. <laughs> she doesn't realize what she's doing to herself and she doesn't realize how much power she actually Ugly has. Truth of Divorce Podcast with Sam and Leah, helping you not just survive, but thrive. Hello guys, and welcome back to the Ugly Truth of Divorce. We are your hosts, Sam and Leah, and we have a story for you today. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if you guys, we had told you guys earlier this week or last week that we were going to meet. So we've been friends for three years. We are going to meet for the first time Tuesday. <laughs> at, a, at the airport in Chicago. At the oh, airport. Yeah. And here we are. It didn't happen. Uh, and wah, so we're going to just talk wah. about it. Yes, we were supposed to, I was going to fly out of Buffalo. She was waiting for me in Chicago. Uh, before three hours before I was supposed to be at the airport, we get a message from our Airbnb. Um, One this, sentence. This property is no longer available. You have been refunded. Oh, that's fun. No explanation. No, no explanation. No offer up of like, hey, we got another, we have another one that's available or hey, use this link to rebook. Yeah, it was just like, you're on your own. We okay. gave you your money back. Super. So then we're running around trying to find an Airbnb that's available that night that we can check into. Mm -hmm. Scrambled mm -hmm. around, found one. Found okay, one. crisis averted, right? So I get to the airport. I go in. There's there's like no wait, which is fantastic. I get to my gates in like 10 minutes. I'm sitting at but, the gate. But while you're doing that, I take off from my house and I'm in the car for three hours to get to my airport. So. Right. Long so as trip. soon as we booked, as we are finishing up the booking, the new Airbnb, Airbnb, I jump in the car in and the we car. finish talking while she's getting all herself all acclimated at the airport. Yes. So I'm in the car headed up three hours. With two kids in the back. <laughs> nope. Nope. We dropped them off. We dropped them oh, off. Oh, you dropped them off. Okay. We dropped them off. Thank God. So, so then I get to my gate and I see, oh, my flight's delayed by a half an hour. Fuck. Okay. Well, we can still make this work. As long as I land, I will just run to the gate where Sam is waiting for me and I'll be able to catch our, my connecting flight and we'll be able to fly to Vancouver, which is where we're Because we going. had a 40 minute, it, there's there was 40 minutes. If everything was going and all stars were aligned, it yes. would have been a 40 minute break between her landing and ours taking off. So it was right. 40 minutes for us to hang out, talk, you know, her to find her gate, everything. So when she right. sees 30 minutes, she's like, okay, now oh, I have shit. 10. Now now I I have to, I'm right. going to be running, you know, I'm going to be pulling a, you know, running. And then, running and then it's like, oh, it's delayed another 30 minutes. And every 30 minutes I'm seeing that I'm getting a text message that my flight is delayed by another 30 minutes. So I'm like, well, now this, now I'm missing my connecting flights. And then I had to go back out all, I had gone through TSA, all that stuff. So I had to go back around, go back to the front of the airport, go to the desk and be like, so the connecting flight, I'm, I'm missing that now because of this, my flight is late. Like, what are my options? The only option was she's like, well, we can still send you to Chicago and then just put you up in a hotel. And then in the morning, you can fly to Newark, New Jersey, and then get a connecting flight to uh, Denver, Colorado. And then you can make it to Vancouver, maybe uh, the next day late at night, which would have then we would have missed the entire first day of the two day meeting that we were supposed to attend. So we're like. Right. Not gonna work. Like I yeah. could have sent Sam by herself, but she's like, "There's no fucking way I'm getting on the plane." Oh, I'm like, so when she calls back to say she's delayed the whole hour and she's gonna miss, we are literally at the fucking beginning. If you know O'Hare Airport, we are at the beginning of chaos of traffic of the biggest airport in the world. And I'm like telling Jared, who has really no idea what's going on, I'm like, "I'm not going," and he's like, "We're at the fucking airport." Like. Right. We're, we are at the whole tangled mess of like where right. you turn and everything. Drive. Here we are. I'm supposed to be dropping you off. And meanwhile, I'm at the airport going, they can't fly me anywhere today. <laughs> so in literally like, I, I think there was like a 30 minute window. I get car sick. So I'm in the Why? car looking at Trying my phone, weed. talking to her, trying to look for flights for her. Because apparently I think that the airport doesn't know what they're talking about. And so I'm looking for flights that starts to make me sick on the phone. And then I'm like, well, fuck, once we decided that we were canceling, then I'm like, okay, well now I have to cancel my flight. So I'm trying to do that while I'm getting car sick. So my back is sweating. My ass is sweating. My armpits are sweating. I'm feeling nauseous. Jared knows. So he's rolling the windows down and I'm just like, and he's having to like stop. And I, I was so like, Ooh. and then I figured out, oh fuck, we just booked an Airbnb. So I stop with the flight thing get a hold of the Airbnb lady. She's also in Canada, right? Cause we're, we were going to Canada and she's like, are you in the States? And I'm like, yes. And she's like, well, you should have bought the insurance that was offered to you. And I'm like, 
there, believe me, I would have clicked on it knowing the life that her and I have. And I didn't, it wasn't an option to click on it. So she's like, I'll refund you if it gets booked. You guys, we had this Airbnb booked for less than two hours, right? Less than two hours. We had already canceled it. And, uh, so we didn't get our money back on that one. Uh, yeah. So what we yet, I mean, I, I to me, I, I am just like, do I bitch? Do I, what do I do? The rules, the rules. I mean, but she didn't book it because otherwise she would have given me my money back. So, but we couldn't hear each other and I was getting frustrated because I was car sick. So I was like, we'll just switch to texting back and forth because I couldn't handle the talking, um, to her because she couldn't hear me. I couldn't hear her. We were in a horrible, I was by the airport. And so I told Jer, I said, look, I don't, we just need to get out of here. Get me to a gas station. I can get out of the car, breathe some fresh air, stop sweating profusely, and we can make a plan. So then I figured out how to cancel my flight. I got my money back on my flight, um, yeah, or at least got credit. Yeah, yeah, I got credit for that. Um, so we're just out the Airbnb, but it was just like, and then you're thinking, okay, did we make the right decision? Like, should we have canceled? Should Sam just have gone by herself and done this business meeting? And I just think no, because once I got home, yeah. all hell broke loose here. <laughs> so, right. so I think there's just been a reason why, you know, when the Airbnb first canceled, that was weird, you yeah. know, and then for her flight to be delayed, it was like, okay. And Lee and I have just really believed in like, what's the universe trying to tell us? The universe is saying, stay home, like just stay home. And on top of this, my immediate family, um, my mom and dad and sister are all moving at the exact same time. I'm moving. All of them are moving. And my sister had some, some truck problems. Uh, my mom and dad had to stay in an Airbnb, like all these, everybody was having like a little bit of chaos in their life. Mm -hmm. So when this happened between Lee and I, I'm like, look, I don't want as much chaos as is happening to my sister, my mom and dad. Like I, I wouldn't be able to handle it. So like, maybe this is just a sign we don't need to go and we'll just rebook when it fits into our schedules better and we can take more time to plan it. And because we plan, plan this in like in two weeks. Yeah. And so we just, we backed out of it. And then when I got home, some things happened with my closing on my house. And I was so glad that I was here to be able to handle it and not be in Canada in the middle of a business meeting because things, decisions needed to be made yesterday. And thank goodness I was home because I would not have been able to make those decisions and those phone calls to get everything switched around if you and I would have been in Canada in a business meeting. So right. I think it's, it's just, just been, so, and the reason we're sharing all this too is because I think it's so important to remember things are going to happen that are out of your control and you have two options. Two options. You can resist the change, right? You can fight the things that you really have no control over, which really just makes you frustrated and stressed and anxious and angry and, or you can just roll with it. And that's really what we tried to do. I, I mean, I, when I tell you, I was so chill at the airport when all of this was going down, really, I was just like, well, this must be what's about, I, I can't control the flight either, either it's going to work or it's not. I have no control over that. I just have to trust that things are happening exactly the way they're yeah. supposed to. Maybe I don't understand why, but I know there is a reason that's, that's just how I, how I live my life truly is like, I trust the universe. I just surrender to it as often as possible and go, okay, I see you. I see a universe. Like, I don't see. get why this is happening, but I'm just going to roll with it. And I uh, believe that maybe this was because we were being protected from something, maybe because we, it was the wrong timing and we're supposed to go at a different time. That's going to be more beneficial. Maybe we're okay. going to, there's going to be something that happens before that, then that we're supposed, you know, who there's like unlimited, or, you know, yeah. uh, reasons or, or that, that this may maybe happen to us. I'm not that person yet. I'm getting there because of you, but I'm not, I'm the person at the airport that would probably be yelling. Like you got to fix this. You got to, that's, I'm a former of that person, you know? Yeah. So like, and the reason again, we're sharing this is because a lot of you are here for divorce help. And so when your court date gets changed and you right. lose your shit and you're right. like, they didn't hand in the paperwork they were supposed to, yes. now, right. Everything. Oh, there's no modification. Now we got to wait. Now All we have another it. date. Now it's been pushed three months. And I was that person when those things happened in my case, you know, a GAL doesn't have the report done. The mediator cancels your date and you you've worked yourself up. And then it's like an hour before. And she's like, Oh, my kid is sick. We're canceling. And you're like, fuck, I took the day off work. My kids are in daycare and you get so angry. And, and as somebody that was like that for years that I would get angry at circumstances that I had no control over, I'm going to tell you from somebody that has learned a new pattern of breathing and, and letting shit go and just feeling the flow of it. Now 
I was putting so much extra stress on myself by getting so angry yeah. and so frustrated. I was, I was like literally something negative happened to me and I would push it even further. I'm like, right. you know what this happened, but let me push it over here and make it way worse than what it is. And make right. this big you're, not thinking clearly. you're emotionally no. reactive. You're making oh, decisions guess. that you probably wouldn't make if you were more level headed. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, I would cuss out my attorney. I would flip out. I'd cry Then I'm calling my mom and I'm smoking the whole way right. home. And Some of like, y'all are putting that shit on fuck? Facebook real quick, you know, or <laughs> like, like passive aggressively like, bitch about, about this. And it, it would just, and then I come home and I'm angry in front of my kids and I'm short and I'm like, you don't understand what happened to me, you know? And it was just this, and that shit would weigh on me. I mean, my face looked like, uh, I mean, I looked so much older back in the day just because I was weathered and I was going through so much stress and I wasn't eating well. And that shit would keep me up at night using alcohol, using, you know, smoking cigarettes. Like it was my job. Like when my kids weren't around, like I just used everything as a reason to stress like, oh yeah, that well, this is why I am the way I am. This is why my life sucks. Look at this. This is just another thing that went wrong in my life. Yeah. And I would just say so negative. I couldn't get out of it. It was like, instead of the spin that I'm putting on things now, because of your insight of like, it's meant to be, maybe that just saved you from being on a plane crash. Maybe that just saved you from, you know, not having an Airbnb. Cause we were landing at 1230 at night. Who the fuck's going to give us an Airbnb at 1230 at night. We would have been homeless, you know, had the right. second Airbnb, all these things. Like I'm looking at it now, like just saved myself, save myself time, save myself energy, save myself more stress where before I looked at it as see figures. This is my life. My life is horrible. Right. I would, it's just perception on how you take things in, right. but I'm telling you I, the physical reaction I had the other day was being from being car sick. And then once I got out of the car, Jared and I were like, well, where do we want to go eat? Where, where do we, it's like, looks like we're in the car for seven hours today together. Like let's yeah. make the best of it. So we made plans and we made lists and we go, talked about our new house and, and we got to spend time together. And so we had to make it a positive, you know, I got to see my kids and I didn't have to miss my kids for four days, like trying to find the positive in things yeah. and how my body reacted was so much different than when you hold on to the, what the fuck? I can't right. believe this is fucking happening to me. And with divorce, there's a lot of those moments. So much. Cause it's your energy, right? I say all the time, you have to be the guardian of your energy. You, uh -huh. have, you are the guardian of your own energy. And so when you get caught in that like shit storm of like victim mentality, yeah. or of course this is happening or the, you know, what else is new? And, um, mm -hmm. you're, you're perpetuating that energy. You're staying in that energy. Whereas if you just yeah. consciously decide, you know what, I'm going to choose a different perspective. I'm going to decide to look at this from a different way and say, you know what, maybe this is what's best. I trust the yeah. universe or God or whatever you, whatever your beliefs are. I'm, I'm a spiritual person. And I, I just trust that this is unfolding exactly the way it's supposed to. We're exactly where we're supposed to be at exactly the right time. I can't see it as humans. We're very limited to what we can, we can see. And there are just so many things happening around us that we don't, that we're, we're not aware of. So right. I really just, I go with it. I've learned to, and I'm not, I'm not saying that like a hundred percent of the time I'm just like chill and like nothing bothers me. Like, let's be real. There are things that I get all worked up about and then I have to kind of come down and go, okay, whoa, I don't need to be, yeah. all, you know, in a tizzy. Okay. Let me chill. Let me change my perspective. So it changes how I feel. But for the most part, like when this was happening, I was so, I was just like, I, I was indifferent. There literally yeah. was no emotion at all. I wasn't frustrated. I wasn't mad. I wasn't sad. I was just like, well, this is what's happening. So I got to right. trust it. <laughs> that's right. it. Like that's how, you know. Right. I just think there's, there's so many opportunities for you to just hit pause before you initially react to bad news or a change. Cause it's, cause I think it's your perception. It's bad news. You yeah. know, yes. you're, you're taking it as bad news, but if you yeah. just hit pause before you let your brain go there and think, okay, there's a reason why. And in divorce, it's so hard because you're like, why did our court date get changed? And why did they not turn in their paperwork? And why did this happen? And you have to hold on to the idea that there's another plan. And yeah. I think the excitement of, of whenever you said that yesterday or two days ago when this happened, when you were like, well, let's, I, I'm excited to see what this means is going to happen. Cause yeah, if we so didn't the go, then that means something unfold. else. Yeah. Something else is going to unfold. So now I've been like, what's this email say? What's this right. happening? Who's going to be on my live? What, you know, who, how am I going to get a phone call? And 
in reality, I think for me, my whole journey was to be home when this house thing all switched because our closing date got moved and I was able to make like 25 phone calls yesterday and move everything around and get everything situated and all the inspectors and everything now are going on. I was able to do that. Had I been in a business meeting, I right. would have lost focus. I would have lost focus at the business meeting and not been able to give my full attention to business because I would have known the house thing was going on at the same time. And I know Jared, this is not his wheelhouse. And I would have been, I would have been distracted. And then our business yeah. meeting would have been a bust and yeah. I would have been mad, you know? And so I think it's just important to remember, try not to judge something as good or bad. Yeah. Because you don't really know. Right. And it goes mm -hmm. back to Sam and I love this book called a happy pocket full of money. It's great. Yeah. If you want to like, learn how to manifest money and get into that wealth mindset. But there's mm -hmm. a story inside that book about a farmer and I'll tell it really quick. So uh, one day a farmer's horse ran away. So the neighbor comes over and goes, oh, I'm so sorry for, for your loss, for your misfortune. And the farmer says, well, who's to say that this is good or bad? The next day, not only does his horse come back home, but he brings a bunch of horsey friends with him that he met when he was on his adventure for the day. Oh. So now the farmer has like 12 horses and the neighbor comes over and goes, oh, congratulations on, on, on this fortune of yours. And the farmer says, well, who's to say if this is good or bad? The next day, the the farmer's son tries to ride one of the new wild horses gets thrown off of the horse and breaks his leg the neighbor comes over and said i i heard about the, the bad news i'm i'm so sorry and the farmer says well who's to say if this is good or bad the very next day the military comes to recruit his son to go to the army but he couldn't because he had his broken leg Right. And so it's just one of those things like when we're in it, we yeah. are so focused on what's actually happening and we want to label it as good or bad when we can't really see what comes next yet. Right. What if this thing that's happening, what you think is inconvenient and you think is bad and you think it's a delay? What if that's exactly what's supposed to happen because it's going to lead you to the place you're supposed to go or the people you're supposed to meet or the situation you're supposed to be placed in? You can't see that far yet. So it's like just having that perspective of I'm just going to trust that this is just part of it. This is part of that bigger picture to get me to where I'm supposed to be. It will literally it will change your life and it'll change how you feel about everything that's happening around you. I feel like I'm that farmer. My life is the farmer because going through that divorce, you know, so much money, so many lawyers, so many years, <clears throat> so much turmoil and heartache through that whole process. And then when they come down and they say, okay, you're doing 50, 50, I lost my mind, <clears throat> literally lost my mind. Right. And I had a breakdown. Cause I'm like, how do you, how do you spend eight days in court with 43 witnesses and spend this much money and, and all these things just to get 50, 50, like that's what we were doing. It, it, and like, it, it just, I couldn't wrap my head around it. And I had a therapist say, everything is supposed to happen this way. Like there's a reason why you got awarded 50, 50 after going through all of that, all those evaluations, all those things. Cause literally guys, they just handed us what we were already doing. So it's like, why did we have to jump through that hoop, that hoop, that hoop, that hoop, if this is just what you were going to say? And I was pissed. I was pissed for my kids. I was pissed for myself. I was pissed for why did I spend that much money if this is just, you literally could have just said, keep doing what you're doing. And we could have saved a hundred G's like it made no sense to me. And my mom kept saying, my mom is a religious person. And she just kept saying, God has a plan for you. And, and it's going to unfold. Eventually it's going to unfold. Fast forward, you know, I'm, I'm pissed that my kids got 50, 50. I didn't think it was the best situation for them. It was not the safest environment for them. And something happened 18 months later and I had sole custody and a therapist said before that happened, they said, you know, everything is supposed to happen the way it's supposed to happen. And sometimes this overexposure is going to get you to your end result a lot faster versus just a slow pace, you know, situation. And I was like, well, it fucking better. You know, I, I still had this negative. And then you fast forward 18 months later, something happened and I have sole custody and then, he, you know, move it down the road. And now I do this for a living. Mm -hmm. And my mom is over there going, see, I fucking told you you had a plan. You know, right. um, my mom loves God, but she also loves to cuss. And she's like, I told you there was a fucking plan. I told you that there's a reason why you had to go through that. You know, he believed that you were strong enough to go through all of that hell, all of that misery, all of that thing. And then use your teaching style to be able to teach people to not you know, make mistakes or do these things or have support as they go through all these things. And so I truly believe like my life is that story of like, well, why? Well, I don't know if this is going to be good or bad yet. I don't know. And I finally know that I'm on that good spot where like, 
I was supposed to go through all of that misery and hell. And now when I take talk about it, I know that at least sharing my story is helping so many people. I see it all the time. I was live this morning and people are like, were you married to my ex-husband? Like, good Lord, were they brothers? And it's, I, I have the ability to talk well. I have the ability to share my story. I'm not scared of sharing my story anymore. And I just want everybody to know the reason you're going through all of this struggle is because something is good on the other end of it. And you have to take that and look for that good. And, you know, I could have sat back and never shared my story. I could have sat back and stayed a teacher and be teaching kids and, and never touched on divorce. And I probably would have been okay. But the fire I have in my belly about sharing my story and helping people is what I was supposed to do. And I just know it. I know it as the day is long, that this is my journey in life. I had to go through all of that so that I could do this. I just know it. And now when you take that perspective and you look back on your past and go, okay, I remember those pain points. I remember going through that. I remember what that feels like, but I also know what this feels like. I also know what healing feels like. I also know mm -hmm. what sharing your story and just telling the truth is like, and not hiding behind. Oh, I can't, I can't, that's not me. I'm not strong mm -hmm. enough. Yes, you are. And getting to this point is so rewarding that it does. It makes all that, that I went through worth it. Um, it was horrible. It was hell, but I really wish I would have had a different perspective back in the day. Um, it, I think that would have helped myself get to where I am now faster. Mm -hmm. But man, I was just negative Nancy. I took everything as just a dagger to the heart. Like somebody's trying to make my life more miserable. Like, look, push me down further, push me down further. And it's like, I could have picked myself up quite a bit and I didn't. I let myself just be like, see, see, this is happening to me. See this. And it was like, girlfriend, you're in charge of your own life. Like, how do you want to look at this? And I was looking at everything negative, everything, everything is, a. I mean, it's just, and it's exhausting. I mean, how, how my body is now energized and full of life and, and, and moving it. And, and it, I don't know, it's a vessel back then. Oh, it was just, I was beating the shit out of myself. Yeah. Metaphorically and physically just beating the shit out of myself. Um, not sleeping all the negative toxic things I was doing to it. Yeah. I mean, you can see it. I mean, when I look back at my old pictures too, oh, like, oh God, that girl, that poor yes. girl, it doesn't even, she's so clueless. <laughs> she doesn't realize what she's doing to herself and she doesn't realize how much power she actually has. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I didn't tell you. So we're moving. Uh, not a newsflash. Um, my daughter was cleaning out the basement. My 17 year old daughter, who's going to be 18 this month. Whew. Uh, she found my whole like container from my ex-husband and I, mm. where I kept the cards and kept everything oh. and like our first dates and all that. It was just like this, why? I don't know. I, it just, it was down there. I had totally forgotten about it. She read them. Oh shit. And I don't care. I mean, fuck it. It, it is what it was, you know? And she read them. And one thing she said is she goes, I didn't recognize you in that writing. Mm. I didn't recognize you. She goes, I can believe everything that he said. She goes that she knows love bombing. She's like, I, I saw that in every card. She goes, but your responses and notes and stuff. She goes, you were unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. She's like, I mm -hmm. could just see that you did not like the decision that you were in. She's like, I could feel it in the way you were writing that you were like, I fucked up. I'm in the wrong spot and I need out. And I'm going to say whatever bare minimum I need to say. Um, like one of them, she said, she goes, you responded back to him with, could you just show me some more respect? Could we work on being more respectful tomorrow? She's like, the fact that you had to request that mom. Right. The desperation, sad. right? That we don't even realize. Sometimes we don't even realize how bad mm -hmm. of a situation we're in until afterwards. And we're looking back and we're like, that's bare minimum. I was literally begging, yeah. begging for, respect. for him to just be respectful to me. Like that's, that is bare minimum. Yeah. Behavior. Yeah. But yeah, she was just, she was very sweet. And she goes, I didn't read them all. She goes, I just kind of wanted to see how you were responding and how, what you were saying. And she's like, and she goes, I didn't recognize the person I know now. She's like, I really don't. She goes, I well, get not it. High. Your standards are high. You know how oh, to yeah. boundaries yeah. like a motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, Jared was like, are we burning it? I go, fuck yeah, man. We're lighting that shit on fire. We're letting nice. all that go. So there is a, there is this awesome feeling of moving that you do get to leave behind a lot of things and just not take it with you into your new life. So I'm super excited about having this new house and nothing's going into it that doesn't bring me light and joy. Mm -hmm. Like if it's heavy yeah. and dark, it's staying here.
Yeah. You know, and that's and a great perspective too, for you moms who maybe have to leave the, the family home and get your own place. Maybe it's real small. Maybe it's a small apartment. I had to move into a really, really tiny little townhome. It sounds big because it's the word townhome, but it, it wasn't. It was very, very small <laughs> and ugly, but it was mine. I could just leave that shit behind me, create my own space with my own energy in there, decorate how I wanted to yes. do, th do the things Thank the way I wanted. wanted. It was mine. I owned it. I paid for it. Um, and there is really something about that, about having your own space to start anew and understanding that it's also just a stepping stone. That's not necessarily where you're going to be. Where you're always going to be. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just a for now to get no. back on your feet, to get your shit together, um, to save up some money and then to to move into the next place. So uh, keep that in mind too, if you are having to kind of find a new home or if you're in a, uh, an apartment that you don't love or something right now, you know, by yourself, it's just temporary. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys, um, when this airs, it'll be Monday, June 10th. And I just will tell you that I will have a workshop that day on Monday and Tuesday for parenting plan building. So if that is something that you are interested in, please sign up, go to samanthaboss.com and sign up for that workshop. Uh, I now have a workbook with it. And I was telling the people on live this morning, you know, this whole idea, and it kind of goes into what we're talking about. When you're getting a divorce, you don't know what you don't know. You, you yeah. just don't. And, and you hired an attorney who's supposed to lead you down the path, but their path is giving you legal advice, not right. what's best for your journey and for your children. And knowing how to navigate that is where I want to jump in. I mean, going back to why my life was shitty, my parenting plan wasn't good. I didn't know what to ask for. I trusted attorneys that weren't in it for the, the right reasons. And it just backfired on me because I just put my head down in the sand and was like, okay, I'm just going through a divorce. Let's hurry up and get this over with so I can stop the shame and guilt that everybody's looking at me. And it was, it was wrong. I should have asked questions. I should have raised my hand. I should have took classes. I should have read more books. I should have advocated for myself so much more. But there was so much negative shame and guilt around the divorce that I just wanted to like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Do you need any help? Nope, I'm good. And I didn't do any of the things that I'm trying to teach you now, which is, Take the time to hit pause, to get an education about this process, because the things that you do now in this divorce and this paperwork and all these decisions are going to impact yourself a year from now, five yeah. years from now, 10 years from now. And this paperwork is legally binding. So what you decide now, whether you're emotional or you're good, determines how your future is. And some of you are really emotional right now and you're in that negative Nancy mode and you're in that out to get me mode and, and you can't see clearly. And I'm telling you, it is your job to advocate for yourself. It's your job to know what to ask for. It's not your attorney's job to tell you what to do. It's your job to bring stuff to them and them give you advice on, is this good or bad? You have to bring stuff to the table. And so I will do that with you on Monday and Tuesday. And uh, I just, I want... <laughs> What what's best for you and knowing even if you if you don't write anything down to take to your attorney at least when your attorney hands you something you can read it and go well this is shit i want more or you're gonna go man this is really good this has the details sam talked about i'm telling you right now like you have to go get an education about that. It's on Monday and Tuesday, June 10th and 11th. It's $147. It's roughly four hours of content. So just wrap your head around that. Four hours of content plus a workbook mm -hmm. for only $147. Mm -hmm. I guarantee four hours with your attorney be costing you way more than that. And there's no fucking paperwork you're walking out of other than your bill. So make we sure heard nothing but good things about everybody who's, who's gone to this workshop. Well, some of these people are now a group coaching client of ours and they've done the workshop and then they put it together. The thing is, even if you, and this is the thing that I learned from Sam, is even if you're in an, uh, an amicable co-parenting yeah, relationship yeah. where you're getting divorced, it's not super high conflict, girl, you still need a parenting plan because there's seasons. There's always seasons in um, co-parenting. Can you hear the trees yeah. being cut down? No, no. <laughs> um, no. So it's like, you might have, you might be going really good and you guys are getting along and everything's going fine. And then all of a sudden, oh, your ex is now maybe dating someone new. And now she's got a lot of opinions and she wants right. things done differently. And then you're going to be like, what the fuck? Everything was fine. And now you want to change everything. So having that parenting plan is just a great thing to be able to fall yeah. back on. But if you do have a high conflict uh, co-parent, you, this is a non-negotiable. Right. You have to have a parenting plan. You don't understand how many times you're going to have to communicate with that person to come to a decision when it comes to your kids if you don't have a parenting plan. Right. I my parenting plan is like two sentences. <laughs> it's non-existent. It keeps this me awake at night. 
Yeah, I didn't even know what a parenting plan was. I was like, oh, my attorney is going to do everything that needs to be done. Great. Mm -hmm. We get divorced. Mm -hmm. I get my divorce decree. It's like two sentences, essentially saying the parents will work together to make all decisions. Right. And she and my daughter was only like two. So yeah. I have a long way to go. You know, luckily, I we are pretty amicable and we we can just have conversations and come to agreements about things. But it would have saved me still had to have a lot of those conversations when it comes to school breaks, when it comes to holidays, when it comes to just visitation, sick time, like all of this shit that comes up throughout yeah. the year, every year with your kids. You want to already have that shit on paper so that you can just say, refer to the parenting plan. I don't need mm -hmm. to ask you about this. I don't need to have a conversation with you about this. I don't have to change anything that I don't want to refer to the parenting plan. It will save right. you so much stress. Right. Absolutely. So check that out. You guys, I'll, we'll put the link down in uh, the description for that as you guys watch this, but we will be back next week with another episode. Take care guys.